Today we're going to talk about these two things here. This and this. And they're both the same, they're both binary to seven segment hex decoder. So what they do is they take four bits of binary data and then convert it to one hexadecimal character. For example, an F here. And what these are used for is for displaying binary values, obviously, for example, on an address bus or a data bus in a computer. And these are quite useful. And there is a lot of different ways of building these. The probably conceptually most simple one is to just use an amount of TTL gates, but you'd probably need quite a lot of them and the circuit would get fairly large, uh, chip count would be very high. Uh, it, all in all, for anything besides academically looking on how to make circuits, um, it's really not all that useful, I think. Then there is the next way, and there's a couple excellent videos on YouTube on how to do this, is to replace the logic with something like this, which is an EEPROM, and basically using this as a lookup table and just coordinating the values in the 4-bit to whichever digit here needs to be on. And that is another very good way of doing that. It would also give you a relatively small layout. I mean, this is not all that if I'd used something like this, this is not all that much larger. And it is quite cheap and it has the enormous advantage that uh, these are still made. While most other solutions rely on chips that are either obsolete or relatively difficult to obtain. Well, except for the TTL solution, maybe. Um, basic TTL gates are still made and you can still get them quite cheaply. But back in the day, there were a couple of solutions to this problem. And one of them I used here. Um, and we'll talk about that in a second. But another one that is, in my opinion, very nice. But these days, almost prohibitively expensive. And that chip is the TIL311. And it looks absolutely beautiful but it's has been obsolete for many years and it's very hard to get these days especially because the sort of plastic case it's in doesn't really lend itself to desoldering and reusing it which is why it's very hard to get them from um, the usual sources where you get obsolete chips because they don't really lend themselves to desoldering them over a coal stove and then blacktopping them because you'd absolutely ruin them. So um, this is not the sort of option I wanted to do here, especially because they're relatively small and I wanted a large seven segment display like this where it could easily read the number. And while this might not look as good, it is much cheaper and almost as easy. So the chip that I used is the DM9368 by Fairchild. And now I hear you saying, yeah, but that chip is obsolete as well. Um, yeah, it is. And it is not all that easy to source, but you can still get it in fairly large quantities. A little bit more expensive these days. I paid, I think, about $2 each for mine. Um, and they came not blacktop, not blacktopped, um, in relatively mint condition. And all of them worked fairly well. And you can find these much more easily than something like the uh, TIL311. So that is the solution I decided on. Especially because it gives us a relatively easy circuit and it looks relatively neat. It just uses the single chip and that includes 
all the decoding logic, the constant current drivers, everything. So it's a really nice one chip solution. So let's actually look at the circuit for this. It is, as said, relatively easy. We just have the power input here. And since this is a project for the Z80 computer, we'll derive this from the Z80 power supply. It has a little um, decoupling cap here. Don't know if that is strictly necessary, but better to have it and not to need it than uh, to not have it and actually need it. Then we have our four binary inputs, A1 to uh, A0 to A3 down here and the two in between here up here then these two inputs here this is um, ripple blanking i think and this is the latch enable so we pull this high because we don't want ripple blanking and we pull this low because we want the latch enabled then we have our segment outputs from A to F here. Just going up to a seven segment display and yeah, VCC and ground. Pretty self-explanatory, really. So the board is about as simple as the circuit. Although this has a fair number of bridges on here. If you look at that board, it has a couple of bridge wires here because I wanted to have it in a small form factor and especially I wanted to have this this dimension here as small as I could get it. Just about the size of the seven segment display and we'll talk about why in a minute. So this has a couple of bridges on it, but the circuit besides that is relatively simple. Input here, power input here, seven segment, and chip here, and then two resistors and a capacitor. And that's all about it. So why I wanted this to be relatively small is because in the actual computer, I want this to slot in here like this. And then I'll basically have these threaded inserts pushed in here uh, so that I can screw this down with two screws and then this will sit in here like this and look uh, very nice. Yeah, This is why I can't have large amount of circuit board material on these sides. I could make it longer of course. Uh, if, if you could make it twice as long but if I want to keep this spacing which I really wanted to. Um, I have to make it like this. So yeah, I think that's all that's to this actually.